Well, thank you very much. It's an honor and privilege to be out here today uh, to speak with you. It's also an honor and privilege to stand here underneath the flag of the United States of America. I took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's an oath I took seriously, and I know there's many in the audience today who have taken the same oath, and I know there's some people out here who are watching us who have taken the same oath. Thank you for your service. But the important thing about that oath is what it stands for. It doesn't stand for, I will defend the President of the United States no matter what. It stands for, I will defend the Constitution. I will uphold and defend the Constitution. And the First Amendment of that Constitution is freedom of speech. In, in June of 1971, lawyers from this building argued a case before the United States Supreme Court. That case was the United States versus the New York Times. The Supreme Court came back with a 6-3 opinion in favor of free speech. What they said at the time is that the First Amendment doesn't allow the government to suppress the press but the press to suppress the government. That the purpose of free speech is so that the people can hold their government accountable for the crimes and the misdeeds they do, that the government can never hide behind a shroud of secrecy, and cite secrecy as a defense against, the, or as, as a way of suppressing free speech. It was a very important, very important decision. One that, if journalists today were a half of what they were 50 years ago, they'd be here in overwhelming numbers supporting this very cause. One month after the Supreme Court passed or voted 6-3 for this uh, opinion, a child was born. His name was Julian Assange. 1971. Here we are today talking about free speech and we're talking about Julian Assange in the same breath. Because ladies and gentlemen, he is the face of free speech. He is that which defines the struggle we should all be united in. Standing up for our right to say what we want, when we want, to whom we want. Now unfortunately, Julian Assange may be extradited to our country. I hope it doesn't come to that. But if he does, I demand that the U.S. courts pay attention to the words written in the opinion of the United States versus the New York Times, where the Supreme Court chided, chided the lower courts and said, you should never have even heard oral arguments on this that you can never allow the government to use secrecy as an excuse to suppress free speech. What has Julian Assange given us? Julian Assange has done nothing more than that which we demand of everybody who claims to be a journalist. That is, to find the facts, report the facts, and turn them over to the people so they can judge the facts and hold people accountable for the facts. He's exposed war crimes. He's exposed the lies of the U.S. government. And again, I didn't take an oath to serve the U.S. government. I took an oath to defend the Constitution, embarrass the U.S. government when it needs to be embarrassed. Hold our elected representatives accountable for what they do in our name. It's a shame, but I'm proud of it, that a foreigner has to serve as a better example of defending American values than many American journalists. Now we gather here under this flag. This flag is supposed to stand for something. I wore this flag, 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 flag proudly on my shoulder when I served in the Marine Corps. But this flag stands for the defense of truth. And I'm telling you right now, Department of Justice, if you dare hold Julian accountable for a violation of the law that did not occur, then take this flag down and hoist the Jolly Roger because piracy of American democracy has taken place. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out.
it up for Scott Ritter, everybody.